What is going on you guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to apply auto layout constraints fully programmatically, uh, kind of ins and outs of it, good practices, bad practices, all the good stuff, all fully in code. So if you don't know, auto layout is a system to apply constraints to lay out your code in an automated fashion. Uh, and oftentimes people kind of teach it with storyboard, which uh, is great and all, but I think seeing it through code is uh, pretty helpful as well. So uh, if you are excited for the video, make sure you destroy the like button as per usual. Uh, hitting that like button really helps out the video and channel grow. Uh, if you are a returning viewer, hit subscribe while you're at it. Uh, I also want to shout out all of you and say a big thank you for helping this channel across 10,000 subscribers. Uh, we've come a long way, got a long way to go. That said, let me stop going on and on, open up Xcode, get excited, and let's dig into auto layout in code. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. In addition, to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. Let's begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to go ahead and stick with our app template here and let's name our project constraints, constraint layout in code. Make sure your language is Swift, lifecycle is UI kit and interface is storyboard. Let's continue. Let's go ahead and save it. And before we dive into the code, let me go ahead and pick a simulator over here and let's hit the run button. That way everything is nice and ready for us to actually see our code in action. Let me expand my Xcode window. And finally, let's jump to our view controller file. So as you might know already, there is uh, this notion of constraints and auto layouts to lay out our views on the screen. Uh, other than auto layout, you could use frame based layout where you specify x, y width and height of every frame. Uh, traditionally, auto layout, a lot of people teach it through storyboard and how you connect, uh, you know, your outlet to something and uh, you can in fact do auto layout fully through code and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So before we get into uh, some of the conceptual explanations of why we should do things a certain way, let's start off with an example since I think seeing it is often pretty helpful. So I'm going to create a basic view here called my view. We're going to say my view that background color is link, which is just a blue color. And we're also going to say my view uh, translates uh, auto resizing mask into constraints is going to be false. If we don't specify this, uh, our constraints will not apply properly. In view to load, we're going to want to add this uh, as a sub view. And I'm going to go ahead and create another function called uh, add constraints. And we're simply going to call this function right after we add the sub view, just like that. So once you do that, hit command R, you'll notice you don't see anything uh, different here. Your view is in the hierarchy, but there's no frame assigned to it. So the way we get it to lay itself out is of course with constraints. So there's a bunch of different constraints you can pick from. Uh, there's width, height, pinning, if you want the view to be equal to the left, right, top and bottom. Uh, there's multipliers and a whole heap of things to look at. So let's start off with the basics. So we're going to create an array called constraints and we're going to initialize this to be an array of NS layout constraint. We're going to add our constraints and then we're going to activate our constraints. So activating the constraints is pretty straightforward. You can just say NS layout constraints, activate and pass in your array of uh, constraints to be activated. Uh, think of activation as applying the constraints uh, to the actual view in question. And adding is we're just going to append to the constraints collection which constraints we want. So a simple append. 
And we're gonna apply four constraints to our blue my view. And we wanna start off by pinning the view to each side of the screen. So it takes up the entirety uh, minus the safe area. So we don't wanna overlap the status bar or uh, this little home uh, screen indicator thing at the bottom as well. So we're gonna say my view dot uh, leading anchor. So leading and trailing refers to left and right. We're gonna say constraint and we want equal to, and we're gonna say, let me close this right panel so you have some more room. And we're gonna say it's equal to the current views safe area layout guide dot leading anchor. And I'm actually gonna copy and paste this to have a total of four. And we're simply gonna change these up. So the next one is trailing. So change that there and here. Next one we'll do is bottom anchor, which is the bottom of the screen, of course. So change that there and here. Next one is top anchor. Go ahead and put that there and put this here. And that's all we need to do to actually pin our my view, which is blue, to the entirety of the screen. So go ahead and hit Command R and let's see if we did that correctly. So if you run it, you'll see that the blue view now takes up the entirety of the screen. Um, and in fact, it also does respect the safe area of the status bar and the home screen indicator at the bottom. One other thing you'll notice is that in uh, landscape, it also now takes care of things like the notch uh, as well as the bottom here. You will notice there is some padding here and we will need to uh, have other logic to handle different rotation, but we're not gonna really dive into that in this video. But let's take a look at other things we can do. So these are the constraints to my view. Now let's say we had a secondary view. So let me go ahead and copy and paste that. I'm just gonna say second view here. And we're gonna say the color is systems red. And we're gonna add a second view into my view, just like that. And we're gonna apply four more constraints. And these ones are gonna be applied to the second view. So go ahead and simply change this and all of these. And we're gonna have this, uh, instead of be re referencing uh, view with that top anchor, this is gonna be its parent, so my view. But one thing that we are gonna change now in this is we can say this equal to part, which is great. I'm gonna line break it to give ourselves a little bit more room. But this can actually take another parameter uh, called constant. And constant basically specifies from that anchor side, how much padding do you want? How much of a margin? So I'm gonna go ahead and say 120. And let's just run it and see what that looks like and see if we did it correctly. All right, cool. So we have our blue view. We have the red view inside of it. And it's 120 from the left. So that works. So now we can, of course, apply that uh, constant parameter to each of these other constraints. So we can have it be 120 from each side, just like that. And uh, you can see it's a little weird because it's actually pushing down 120 from the top and 120 from the left. And the trailing, uh, or the, the right side and the bottom side, uh, are not really respecting their 120 because there's a conflict, right? Because uh, you're saying there's 120 from the top and 120 from the bottom. So you actually need to apply negative constraints for the constants to get it to render correctly. Now, let's see what other constraints are available to us. So let me just go ahead and delete that. Delete that, and we're gonna say second view. And if you just type in a constraint, uh, rather if you just type in which constraint you want. So let's do, there is a with anchor and then you do constraint, you can see you can uh, do a constraint equal to something with a multiplier. You can do equal to multiplier with a constant as well. Let's take a look at the multiplier and see what that looks like. So what, let's say we want this to be the same width as our container, which is my view uh, dot width anchor. And we want the multiplier to be 0 0.5. In other words, we want the uh, width to be one half of our uh, equal to, so our my view. Let's also do that for the height, just like that. And let's say this is the height anchor. And if you go ahead and run it, uh, I believe we'll get some errors in our console. 
Um, let's see. So actually, if we don't specify one of these, let's comment out the height, we should see some errors in our console, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, it looks like we don't. So let's see what I can screw up to get some errors in our console going on. So let's get rid of this translates auto resizing mask. And I want to, there we go, there are those errors. So what happens sometimes is when you apply constraints, if the auto layout engine cannot figure out um, how to satisfy all those constraints simultaneously, it'll throw a bunch of errors like this in the console. Your app will not crash, but basically nothing is gonna lay out properly. And all this is really saying is, hey, wait a second, you told me to apply these constraints, but either they're contradictory or I'm in, unable to do it for one reason or another, right? So in this case, we commented out translates auto resizing masking constraint, so it's complaining. But if we had contradictory constraints, like if we make this leading, we'll see what, go, what goes or has and happens. So in this case, we still have errors because we're saying the leading, there's two leading constraints on this my view and they're equal to two different things. So the layout engine, which drives auto layout under the hood is basically like, wait a sec, man, I have no idea how to do this. And when you read through this, whenever you see a stack trace like this, uh, rather not a stack trace, rather a warning kind of dump in your console, you should really look at two things. One thing is if your kind of mathematical constraints uh, are satisfiable together, AKA nothing is contradictory, and that you have this specified to false. So let's go back and take a look at that width and height constraint. So the width and height constraint is uh, pretty simple. It uh, gives you, you know, uh, the width and height that you want. And right now we've set it to be 0 0.5 as a multiplier. Uh, so it'll take my views width and height anchors and it'll set it to 0 0.5 of it or half of it. Uh, you can set it to be 0.75 and 1. And let's see what that looks like. So you can do that. So looking pretty good. And let's see, you can also change this to be a constant. So let's say we want this to be 200 by 200, and let's see if we can get rid of that. I don't think we can. Let's go ahead and run it. Whoops, looks like I forgot a parenthesis there. Let's go ahead and run that, and let's see what we get. So we see the red view actually takes up the entirety uh, of the uh, screen. So what we want to do is go ahead and open up that constructor again. Let's see what else is available to us. So we have equal to, we have greater than, greater than, less than. Let's go ahead and take a look at this equal to again. So the first parameter here is what constraint do you want this to be equal to? Uh, the next one is a multiplier and then there's also a constant. So actually instead of looking at this, since we already kind of took a look at width and height, let's take a look at center X and center Y. So there are other constraints, as you can imagine, one of them being your center Y anchor. And you can have this be equal to similarly, your parent containers center Y anchor. And let's do that for the X as well. And let's see what that looks like. And the name kind of gives it away of what it's gonna look like, but this is a pretty practical example of how you would wanna go ahead and center things. So let me actually change this to be a multiplier again. And let's do 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Let's go ahead and run that. And you'll see that we have the same height as before. So 50% the width and 50% the height. But now we have it pinned to the center of our screen. And the cool thing is when, what you saw there is when we rotate it, the height actually completely changed. Um, so the height now is reflective of the height in this setting and vice versa in this setting, and it still stays centered and pinned to the center of the screen, hence the center X and center Y constraints. So let's see, what else? So the last thing I'll mention before wrapping up here is, uh, I personally do prefer frame-based layouts. So I think it is subjective to a degree. However, the one place where I do often find myself uh, defaulting to auto layout through code is laying out content in table view cells. So the nature of a table view cell and the way we're doing cell height uh, calculations is dynamic, right? The content is gonna drive the height of a table view cell. Using constraints often simplifies your life a little bit. 
versus calculating everything manually. At the end of the day, my consensus on this is, in terms of layout, do what you think is easiest for you to get your app laid out correctly in all different uh, phone sizes and iPad and so on and so forth. Uh, one being better than the other, highly subjective, do what works for you. And uh, that's kind of the extent that I recommend people take a look at it. So that's it. That's all I've got for you guys today. If you haven't destroyed the like button already, make sure to do so. Helps out the video and larger channel quite a bit. Hit subscribe if you haven't done that already yet and you enjoyed the video or continue to watch these videos. We just crossed 10,000, which is pretty crazy. Um, I started this channel as, you know, a way to pay the knowledge forward since I learned from YouTube over a decade ago. Uh, leave any comments down below of any questions you guys may have, feedback, video suggestions, so on and so forth. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.